Welcome to online worship at First Presbyterian Church of Bryan, Ohio for June 14th, 2020. Thanks for looking in. A few announcements before we begin today. Um, Tuesday free meal is continuing every Tuesday at 5.30. And uh, our numbers have been going down, which I see as a good healthy sign, to be very honest with you. We served 50 this last week. Um, I think we're still meeting needs. I know there were a couple people that were in line for food um, in their cars that had never been here for the free meal takeout. And so, um, and they had some new issues in their lives, so they were able to find us. So the ministry is still viable and needed. Um, we're going to continue doing it takeout for a while. I'm not sure when that's going to change, um, but we'll let you know. And then also, I just finished my recent online Bible study on 1 Timothy, and tomorrow, Monday, we're beginning 2 Timothy together. So if you would like to join us for online Bible study, um, you can, I recorded on Mondays and presented on Mondays, but you can watch it any time. If you would like to be a part of that group, let me know, and I'll uh, make sure you get access to that. Don't forget we have weekly devotions on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesday I do them, Thursday Adam does them. Just a reminder that session is meeting tomorrow night via Zoom to look at the option for reopening worship face-to-face. Um, there is a proposal that is going to the session on Monday night, and I don't know where that'll land or how it'll be changed or if it'll be accepted, but um, we're looking at something pretty serious um, and pretty soon. So hopefully we'll be able to work through something and get us back to some face-to-face worship. Also, just letting you know, our, um, one of our church members died recently, Art Spletzer, and there's going to be a memorial service for him on Saturday, June 20th at 11.30 a.m., but it will not be held here at the church. It's going to be graveside at Brown Cemetery, so you need to be at the cemetery by 11.30 on the 20th. The family's asking that you wear a mask and that you practice social distancing, uh, as there, and there will be no services or a luncheon here at the church, um, but we're going to try and do everything at the graveside. So I want to open my message today by reading some scripture to you. I'm going to read to you Psalm 96. Hear the word of the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among the peoples. For great is the Lord and worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory, do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved, and he will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant, and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth, and he will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Friends, this summer we're spending some time together looking at the Lord's Prayer. The disciples noticed and were attracted by Jesus' deep and meaningful relationship with Father God, and frankly, I think what it boils down to is they wanted what he had. They wanted that kind of relationship. And so they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. You know, prayer for us has the potential to be vital and alive and and real and raw and life-giving. But sometimes prayer can also be ritual, just going through the motions and sometimes not even thinking about what we're praying. It can be what I call steering wheel type prayer or spare tire kind of prayer. And that comes from Corey Ten Boom, and her quote is, Prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire. In other words, does prayer help guide and direct your life? 
Is it the center of your relationship with God? Or is prayer just an afterthought? Is prayer only engaged in when life gets tough and uncertain, fearful, awful, and hard like it's been the last few months? Jesus wants our prayer life to be real and vital and alive and current and honest and raw. That's why he taught his disciples to pray using what we now call the Lord's Prayer. Last week we looked at our Father who art in heaven. We learned that our Father God is really Abba Father, which means Daddy God, who wants us to crawl up on his lap for a chat. Today we look at the opposite side of God, and we find a God that is there for us that is holy and sovereign and almighty. And we look at that phrase from the Lord's Prayer, hallowed be thy name, or hallowed be thy name. And you know when you think about that phrase, it's kind of a strange phrase um, with some strange words. To understand what Jesus is teaching us about prayer in this particular phrase, we kind of need to define some of the words in that phrase and come to understand what they mean, kind of take it apart and put it back together. So first of all, I'd like to look at the last part of that phrase. Hallowed be thy name. We're going to focus on name. You know, we all have names. Tags of identification, ways to differentiate between people. But today, for most of us, our names are not particularly meaningful. Unless we kind of look up our name in one of those name books that kind of tells us what our name's supposed to mean, or supposedly means. For most of us today, our names don't really carry any special meaning beyond helping others know what to call us. We don't derive our identity or self-concept from them. But in the past, things were quite different. In the words of John Boyles, we forget how names, even last names, used to be personal. Smith was a blacksmith. Cooper was a cooper of barrels. Johnson was the son of John. Roosevelt used to live by a field of roses. Eisenhower was a hewer of iron, and so forth. But when you go back to Jesus' time, in the Old Testament time before him, we learn that one's name was an expression of their innermost being. It was a an expression of deepest personal identity, of the essential nature of the person themselves. A name indicated who a person was, not just what they were to be called or what they did. A name stood for the character of the person, their personality, their nature. And that's why God changed names in, in the Bible. Remember, he changed Abram to Abraham, Simon to Peter, Saul to Paul, and that's because their nature changed. Their characters were altered. They were different after their encounters with God. So their name was changed to fit their new character, their new personality, and their new nature. So when we pray, hallowed be thy name, we're speaking of more than just the name of God. For we speak of the very being and character of God himself. Everything God is, everything God stands for, his nature, his basic character, are all tied up in hallowed be thy name. To know God's name is to know God himself. In the Old Testament, God was so holy, so apart from normal human beings, that his name was never spoken and never used. He was called Yahweh, or simply like here, referred to as just name. Hallowed be thy name. And examples from Psalm 96, which I opened the sermon with, and there's some phrases in that psalm. Praise his name. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. It doesn't actually say his name, but bless his name. In essence, that's saying, bless God, praise God, hallowed be our God. That means in prayer we honor God and respect God and thank God and praise God. He's the focus here. He's the center. And this is about our attitude in prayer and where our heart is in prayer. The other word we need to look at today to understand what Jesus is trying to teach us about prayer and about how to pray is the word hallowed or hallowed. When was the last time you used that word? 
hallowed or hallowed. It's not a word we really use in daily conversation, and frankly, outside of the Lord's Prayer, I'm not sure I've ever used it. But hallowed or hallowed simply means holy. Holy is thy name. Holy are you, God. Hallowed or holy means to hold sacred, to treat a thing or someone as holy or set apart. So there's an element of deep honor, veneration, awe, reverence, and respect here. We're to praise holy God for who he is and all he does for us. So in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus is telling us to recognize and be impacted by God's holiness, the sanctity and specialness of God. Nothing and no one is like God. Nothing. No one. So when we say, hallowed be thy name, we're saying, holy be thy name, or, or you are holy, God. But think about it. What does it really mean for us to claim or proclaim and believe that God is holy? What does that mean? When we say, holy be your name, hallowed be your name, it kind of sounds almost like we're ordering God to be holy or that God becomes holy at our bidding. And we all know that couldn't be further from the truth. Deep down, we know that God is holy whether we recognize this truth or not. God's holiness is not dependent on us or our recognition of his holiness. So what I think Jesus is teaching us here about prayer is that we need to come before God. We need to approach God both as daddy, who allows us on his lap for a chat, and also come before him with deep respect and awe at who he is and at his power. In essence, we're saying, hallowed be thy name, when we say hallowed be thy name, we mean we recognize God as holy, as set apart, as sacred. We're in awe of him, and we're in awe of the fact that such a holy, powerful, mighty God invites us into his presence, and that this holy, mighty, incredible God even invites us onto his lap for a chat. That's a pretty amazing concept. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of all things, the one who speaks things into existence, wants a relationship with you and wants a relationship with me. An intimate one, like a father to a child, like a daddy. That's a pretty amazing picture. Jesus is reminding us that Daddy God is also so holy that people were afraid even to speak his name at one point. And we need to hold on to both sides of this image when we pray. God is daddy, and God is awesome with no limits and ultimate power, and find that balance. So Jesus is bidding us to, in essence, say in this prayer and every prayer, may God's name be kept holy by us. I think that's what Jesus is after here. May God's name be kept holy by us. We need help seeing God's holiness at times. We need, help, um, we need God's help in, in living in reverence of that holiness. So we're called to hallow God's name, to keep God's name and nature holy in and through every part of our lives. We're to come before God with reverence and awe and respect. And our lives are to reflect our recognition of the holiness of God. And if they do, if our lives do reflect the holiness of God, then we're involved in hallowing God's name for ourselves and for others. Daniel Walker feels and writes that God is the center of life around whom our entire existence revolves. God is the goal of life, he writes, toward which our existence moves. God is the ground of life in which our existence is rooted. To know, to understand, to act in accordance with this basic truth is the whole purpose of life and the purpose of prayer. So affirming this statement is the first step in hallowing the name of God. We affirm that God should be the center of our lives, around whom our existence revolves, and if I can stand up and say that God is the center of my life and then make God in reality the true center and focal point, it is then that I hallow the name of God and keep it holy. 
Just saying it is not enough. We can hallow the name of God with our words, but we do it even more so in our actions and in our lifestyle. We hallow the name of God when we join him in worship every week, whether online in these times or face-to-face with other believers. Just saying the words, however, does not hallow the name of God. For real life, respect and awe of God must show up in our lives. It needs to show up not just when we pray, but it also needs to show up at work, at play, when we interact with other people, and how we treat other people. And that brings to mind the George Floyd situation. How do we respond to those kinds of situations? We hallow God in how we do that and how we go about it. Hallowing God's name is a lifestyle. It's a choice-by-choice thing, an attitude thing, an impactful thing, a real-life thing. How does our real life reflect the holiness of God? Keeping God's name holy by us will impact and influence others to join us in respecting God and sitting at his feet in awe, or if we're kind of just saying the words but don't really apply them to real-life situations and relationships, our witness can influence and impact people away from God as well. So if we're just saying the words, just kind of going through the motions, we're not really intending to try and live out this deep reverence and respect and awe of God, we can lead people to call God as irrelevant and meaningless and lead them away from the one who brings life and hope to the world. So whether we're taking this seriously or not and applying it to our real life makes a real difference for us and for others as well. So the main message of the phrase, hallowed be thy name or may God's name be kept holy by us, however you want to put that, is that we're to respect and to revere God, to make him holy for ourselves and for others. And Jesus is teaching us that true, life-changing, life-affecting prayer is God-focused and that it leads us into the presence of the most holy, most powerful, most ethereal image of God that we can imagine. And these words of Jesus also help us realize that this holy, this mysterious, unlimited God is accessible reachable, touchable, and lovable. There's an amazing teaching going on here by Jesus. A holy, supernatural, beyond-us type God wants us to join him. Even come sit on his lap for a chat. Prayer is entering into dialogue and intimate conversation and relationship with the Almighty. The unknown becomes known. The God who is beyond us, shrouded in mystery, becomes friend, becomes knowable, becomes lovable, and encourages us to love him in return. Prayer is always, always, always about relationship and connection. Jesus is teaching his disciples and teaching us that a close walk with this infinite, amazing, unlimited God is not only possible, but something that God wants for himself and for each of us. This is steering wheel kind of prayer, not the spare tire kind of prayer. So what an amazing God we love and serve and worship. Jesus is really encouraging us to jump in, to talk to and connect with the God of the ages, to recognize his holiness, to be in awe of that, but also being willing to get to know that God on a personal level, to climb up into his lap for a chat and a visit. That's the kind of God we worship and that we serve who's holy and, and mysterious and all-powerful and all-wonderful, yet he's not so beyond us that he doesn't invite us in and want to walk with us and share all of life with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's share the Lord's Prayer together. You'll remember we're going to be using um, sins in those who sin against us in place of debts and debtors. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I want us to pray together on some other things like we usually do each week together. So one more time, will you pray with me? Holy, unlimited, and accessible God, what an amazing God you are. You're the creator of all, far holier than we can ever conceive of or comprehend. You are beyond us in ways that we can never even imagine. Yet you are knowable, lovable, approachable. You are holy, yet you want to be our daddy God at the same time. That's almost more than we can take in and understand. Thank you, Lord, for reaching out to us, for becoming real and accessible to and for us. Thank you for coming here in Jesus to pay the price for our sins and the things that separate us and keep us away from you. Draw us to yourself in ever deeper ways and teach us to be in awe of you, to treat you as holy, but also remind us you desire a real life walk with us, that you are not aloof, that you do not want to be separated from us. Gracious God, we know that you care about our pain and our loss, our sins and our worries, our anxiety, the things we cope with every day. And Lord, we pray especially this day, and we continue to pray for and with the Ely family upon the death of Mallory. Be with Joel, her husband, as well, and we pray that you be their strength in this extraordinary time of loss. Send people to them in the coming days and weeks and months to help them through this awful loss. Be with those still coping with COVID-19. Be close to those who are on the front line of caretaking and cleaning. Be with churches opening up. Keep them safe as they worship you. Lord, be with our country as we still recover from COVID-19 closures and the effects of the murder of George Floyd. Help us to begin to work on the issues of racial equality and systemic racism. Lord, start with us, your church, your people. Teach us where we have work to do in this area so we can be a helpful light in the darkness. Lord, we also pray for those who are on our congregational prayer list for today. We think of Steve and Lori Bird, Jim and Fran Hall, Carolyn Harrison, Tyson Horton, Kaylee Isaiah and Gabrielle, and Barry and Judy Sweet. Gracious God, we thank you for each one and we ask that you bless each one. We ask that you be at work in their lives, in their hearts, in their journeys, that you be in their stuff, the the things that aren't going so well in their lives, that you help them to navigate those things. Gracious God, we pray that uh, not only will you bless them, but that you will use each one, that you will place them in situations and in the midst of things where they can be helpful, or each one can be your hands and your feet and your mouthpiece. So Lord, bless and lead and guide them and bless and lead and guide us all. So, Lord, lead us and grow us and stretch us and restore us. Change us and forgive our sin. Be with our church and the session tomorrow as we discuss reopening for face-to-face worship. And may we be about your business and doing your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would like to supplement your worship today with hymns and praise songs, I recommend the following hymns. Holy, holy, holy. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, God of the ages, whose almighty hand. And some praise songs that work related to the holiness of God. Um, Revelation song, Holy by Matt Redman. Um, A new one that I've just kind of become in contact with is called Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty by Agnes Day. So those are all great songs um, which will add to your worship and tie to our theme for this day. Friends, it's been good worshiping with you again online.
I encourage you to stay healthy and strong as much as you can. Know that we pray for you, that we miss you, that we love you, and hopefully we will be back face-to-face soon. Um, Even if we do go face-to-face, we do plan on doing some form of online worship for those who aren't comfortable coming back to -to face-to-face worship. So watch for some information this week. Um, We'll get that to you as soon as we can. In Jesus' name, amen.